Hey, it's the footy coach. What a match that was yesterday. A depleted Liverpool side going toe to toe with Man City and coming out on top, but unfortunately not winning the game. They dominated that second half and scared them in a way that has not been seen since Villa did it earlier in the season. But always said, when teams go at Manchester City, instead of sitting back, they can cause a lot of issues for City and City are just not used to it. As always, there was a lot of moments in this game that were decided by the two managers but in what was their last meeting in the Premier League. And then there was a huge talking point at the end, the referees deciding big matches once again. UAE paid referees, of course. At the start of the game, I think, Klopp respected City a little bit by his formation. Not the usual 4-3-3, it felt more like a 4-1-4-1. Man City played their usual 4-3-3 setup with Stones pushing forward into midfield. I think Klopp went for this because he wanted De Bruyne to be controlled by Endo who was playing the deepest in that midfield. Endo didn't really do a good job of that for the first 20 minutes. De Bruyne got free on a few occasions. I think Endo gets a lot of plaudits from Liverpool fans because he never gives up, puts 100% in and he is a brilliant player. But he does allow players to run off him in a lot of games but on the flip side of that he notices these mistakes and improves as the game goes on and he does it in every game. City were probably on top for around 10 to 15 minutes and created some half chances. I think Alvarez on the left was probably a mistake. Bradley had him locked down and what a player Bradley is turning out to be. Caused trouble for Ake down the other end with a couple of opportunities for himself and one of these opportunities he probably should have taken on himself. I think this is where Alvarez let City down in that first half defensively as even though Elliot was normally playing wide right he moves inside a lot and for Ake it was a problem as he would be two versus one often and wouldn't know whether to go with Elliot or to go and meet Bradley who was marauding forward. City's goal was a smart set piece something they've apparently seen in Liverpool setup and De Bruyne put it on a plate for Stones whilst Ake blocked off McAllister. It's not a foul despite people trying to match it with Endo's block in the Carling Cup. Kelleher did his best but no chance a great goal and until later in game I don't think City after this point really got forward. After this goal when they got the ball felt like they were just trying to kill the game off. Kill the Anfield crowd off and they passed the ball around slower. At this point Liverpool's press wasn't that good and I think this is just really down to the number of different front three iterations and midfield iterations that they have. It's difficult to build a good press when your team is always changing but as with all games they grew into the game and that press improved especially in the second half. I thought the second part of that first half you could see Liverpool growing stronger. Soboslai had a great chance to score. Nunes and Diaz both causing issues and having opportunities. Though you could say Edison wasn't really troubled, Liverpool were dangerous on the transition. Every time they won the ball, they would be flying forward. McAllister might just be my favourite midfielder in the Premier League right now alongside Declan Rice. He was the glue for Liverpool, the little maestro knitting together everything brilliant they did going forward. If you do watch his game back, just watch him play. Everything would come from him fighting space or playing under pressure. Always an outlet for his teammates. Crucially, he was also fouled by Rodri, who got a yellow card and I think this led to Rodri being totally ineffective off the ball in the second half. The second half was just Liverpool in second halves this season. Klopp again making adjustments. This time he did go back to his 4-3-3 instead of that more reserve set up in the first half. Elliot pushed up, Diaz pushed up and Diaz in that first half was more hugging the touchline but you see in that second half he had more fluidity. He was in the centre sometimes, sometimes he was out wide and Pep didn't really change the way City played and I think he missed a step here. He didn't see what was coming until later on, once it was probably too late. Ake's back pass leading to the penalty was a mistake and so was Edison's swing at the ball. Should have just tackled Nunes or shepherded him out of play. Nunes is an elite striker. Yeah, he's offside sometimes. Yeah, he misses some chances. But he's always aware, always on the move. And here that paid off. Nunes winning the penalty for an ice cold McAllister, who was my man of the match, who converted it after a long delay. On the other side, Hal Haaland was pocketed by Kwanzaa and Van Dijk. Edison getting injured here could be huge in the title race. From here on, Lupu on top and Luis Diaz. Oh, Luis Diaz. Should have had a hat-trick. Mo Salah came on and played an unbelievable pass. There's people out there that still don't think Salah is one of the best ever Premier League players. This is what he does a lot. He doesn't just score, but he does passes like this. And a lot of the time, they don't get finished. He's obviously not fully fit. He's still the best player in the league, in my opinion. Diaz just needed a little composure here. He was outstanding in every aspect of his game, and he tore Kyle Walker apart. It was just a nightmare for them. City needed two players to stop him, and that just meant it created space elsewhere to be exploited. So you kind of 
had the feeling that all these chances Lupu missed would be punished and it nearly came to play out as Doku did some brilliant play on the left before cracking the post and they got away with that I guess. Klopp's subtle tactical changes and the ability of Lupu to play the ball quickly between the lines which was demonstrated by McAllister and Endo was what really turned the game because City were just sort of sleepwalking trying to control the game and kill it as a contest rather than attacking. Pep up De Bruyne and they argued but it was the right decision. It helped City bring a bit more control into the game as Kovacic dropped in like a central midfielder and Silva moved out right and he played a bit more reserved than Foden was in that position. It came 4-4-2 and Stones couldn't step up anymore due to the pressure Lupu were piling on. Game ended with Liverpool having more, you know, half chances. Gakpo wasting up opportunity to shoot. Think of all the Liverpool players and subs in this game. He was totally ineffectual. Felt like he did nothing of no a mirage. Unfortunate for them as Nunes maybe could have done something. Feet stayed on, but he's had his fitness issues recently too. Finally, this high foot into McAllister. See an idiot saying Doku got the ball, but that's not how Law 12 works. Referees have said before that they might be corrupt. The evidence is mounting. The man in the middle was the the referee paid to go to UAE first class fights and all that yeah here we are a major decision in the final minute of a title decider and it's a simple one McAllister actually gets the ball first karate kick high foot is a foul doesn't matter if he gets a little bit of the ball he makes contact with the player there will be idiots on social media who think this isn't a foul there'll be pundits like Shay Given who are possibly paid to be ambassadors who will say it wasn't a foul they aren't worth listening to it's a foul it's the third time in a big game that PGML has cost Liverpool points not with standing the games against Brighton and Chelsea but they were also conned out of four points too. When you have the ability to see the replay and you don't even send the referee to the screen to see it, it's getting into dangerous grounds. When you've impacted three huge games for one title challenger and forgot to send off Kovacic in a game against another title challenger then maybe it's time they were all fired and this possible corruption was exposed. In England we think we are above corruption and that our game is somehow above these things happening. It only happens in Serie A and La Liga. Well, in recent times we've seen the PPE scandals, Grenfell, Post Office and somehow people think our game is free of that happening when Everton and Forest are being punished quickly whilst a certain state football team has been investigated for years. The more you ignore it like Sky, BBC and Talk Sport do, the more blatant it becomes like yesterday, like Spurs, like Kovacic. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, please do like and subscribe and thank you for watching.